can win this fabulous new Ford Festiva Trio just by watching this video. All you do is pick your favourite clip and fill in the entry form that comes in the box. Make sure your entry is posted to arrive by the 16th of February 1996 and watch the footy show on Channel 9 for the big draw. It's another great bonus from the Visual Entertainment Group. and welcome to Almost Football Legends, the video. 1995 was a great year for the footy show. We had numerous highlights. We saw Sam Newman in a tutu. Well, there must have been some others. Highlights too numerous to even remember. But one of my personal highlights was the new segment we instituted called Almost Football Legends. That's where we invited you, the viewer, to send in your home video footage of incidents that may have happened at local matches. And what a great response we've had. And we've compiled a collection of those seen on the footy show and some that weren't seen on the footy show for reasons that should become obvious. Now being almost footy legends we thought we'd get a bona fide legend to join us and well we couldn't find one but instead Jason Dunstall is joining us. <laughs> How are you Jase? I'm very well Trev. Now this was your favourite segment on the footy show. It was, I must admit it immediately became the segment I most looked forward to every game. Uh, for sheer entertainment value I think it was unequalled. Well uh, of course we saw a lot of spectacular highlights. We did. There were some very skillful acts and also some, uh, some acts lacking a little bit of skill, I think. Well, of course, uh, it's a different discipline playing league football as you do compared to what goes on there at the suburban grounds on, uh, during the week, isn't Most it? Most definitely. And I think if we have a look at uh, some of the highlights, you'll see that we saw defenders flying for marks, which wouldn't happen in our game. And uh, I'm pretty sure that some of the guys knew the camera was on too. They came from six and seven deep. All right, well, let's start by having a look at some of the great marks that were sent in during the year. As we go to the tape, this is what it's all about, Jase. A couple of hangers. Oh, a la Warwick Kappa, use of the hands. Use of the hands uh, in the players back there, but uh, the umpire right on the spot doesn't see a thing as usual. my heyday when I used to be up there amongst the stars. As we come to uh, Melbourne High versus Ajax and Peter Gertz. And didn't the boys up on the hill go up there? They enjoyed that one? Oh, that's, that's almost as big as you, Billy. OK, and this one comes Xavier versus Collegian, and have a look at that for a grab. Simon Arnott. Simon Arnott there, and uh, Simon's actually been drafted by the Swans, and uh, that's a decent grab there, you've got to say. Queensland Country versus South Australian Country, and uh, this is an absolute welter. Watch for the number on the back. Whoa, and very well done. Yes, that's well done, Eddie. That's a good grab. Yeah, it is a great grab. Hectorville versus Wackerville. Oh, sorry, Walkerville. And that is a very nice grab there by Mori Capurso. Mori Capurso. Ooh, Decent nice landing too. grab. And Billy Brownless, take us through this one. Uh, he kicks it high up looking for Brownless. Anson Brownless from Assumption College. There it is. And uh, where'd that come from, Bill? Uh, that's, that's actually me a few years ago, mate. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> And here we go with this week's bunch of legends and check out this for a one-handed mark. Oh, that's, I reckon Brian Lara would walk if he saw that. Uh, that's a good grab from uh, Todd Pickering. That was. Scoffer Davies, Scoffer Davies. Gaza versus Running out Goodwood the outer Saints. Side. Kicks out wide, Lee Hallam. Gaza, yeah, you wouldn't oh! want to play away there. Well, it is not a bad grab. Lee he's, Hallam. He was up there. He stood there. He sat there. And he held the mark. <laughs> I think that just about sums it up. This, this next one comes Mitchell from also. Geelong and District League. Feed off to Elton. Ah. Moved up to Brown. I'd say he's playing at centre-half forward. Wholesale changes. Oh! Oh! Troy Renfrey. There's a hanger for you, Jase. Loves the hangers. He's taken an absolute spectacular grab here. 
And the third one here, this is an interesting, this is David Burke, one of your current teammates, Wayne Campbell, yep. playing for uh, Xavier down. last year. Oh, and a, and a pretty fair grab that, that although Burke. did he hold it long and enough, what do you reckon, Wayne? Yeah, he'd play that. Play. And here's one from the under 11s, and check this remark. Oh, dear. Oh. And the, uh, Eric Cantona, wasn't it? Oh. And the young player there copying one for his corner. <laughs> And they do go in in the under 11s these days, don't they? And here we go with the footy legends for this week and a couple of big hangers to start off with. Firstly, Old Scotch versus Old Xavier. And here's Jeremy Laird. And that's not a bad grab at all. What do you think of that, bouncing? That is a sensational grab, that one. Here's another one. Nary Warren versus Devon Meadows. And Brett Evans is our specky merchant this time. Ooh. And got up nicely there. In from the side too, very nice. Landing was a bit hard. And here we go once again with the footy legends as we watch Joel Brown here. And not a bad mark by the young lad there. Let's just have another look at that one. Wow, it's very nice indeed. The second one comes from East Belmont versus Lee Districts. As we see the play go, oh, gee, that's not a bad grab. Who we couldn't see the ball in shot, must have been shot by Channel 7. <laughs> okay. Oh, what oh, love, Mark. Go oh, on, fire. Too. Thank you yeah. very much. That could very well become one of the picks of the century. The, the Mark. And that'll be the Abco Financial Services Mark <laughs> of the day, I'd say, at this stage. <laughs> Eddie Maguire's put on a quick lead, but that's ignored. He's gone into the true centre half forward position. There's a big mark by Murray Bingham, if ever you've seen one. And he's best on best man on the ground by far. Kennington Sandhurst v Maryborough in the under 15s. And not a bad grab. A couple of big boys in the under 15s down there. Yeah, not a bad hanger here. Uh, Cary yeah, FL v Geelong and District right. FL. And this is a good one. Oh. 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 Like that, Jase? Put the hanger there, mate. Oh. Well, Jase, uh, big collection of grabs there. Uh, some beauties, too. There were, and. Uh, they wouldn't look out of place in our Mark of the Year competitions either, would they? Absolutely not. And it's become compulsory now that uh, there's got to be at least one video camera at every game out there now. <laughs> there are, and some of the players knew the cameras were on. I've got to say, some of the commentators knew the cameras were rolling too. <laughs> didn't they? Well, mind you, we saw a few Jezelenkos, but we didn't hear any Richie Bernos, I don't think. <laughs> no, some of them uh, overacted a little bit on the, uh, on the voiceovers, didn't they? Actually, I do a Richie Beno myself. I'd love to hear it. Well, mate, well, yeah, I'm, uh, being a comedian is compulsory to have a Richie Beno impression. <laughs> You actually get kicked out of the Comedians Union if you don't have one. Uh, mine comes from, uh, it was a great game actually, uh, it was Australia versus West Indies and uh, Dean Jones was batting and uh, he copped a short rising ball from uh, Kirtley Ambrose right to the, uh, the nether regions. <laughs> and uh, Dino was uh, doubled over and he, he sort of had his mouth guard sort of half out and he was biting down on it to uh, stop himself screaming. And uh, Richie's comment on that occasion was, uh, Dean Jones, he's uh, wearing a mouth guard but right now that's not of much use to him. <laughs> Which is my favourite all time, Richie Benno. But, uh, Jace, we also saw plenty of other stuff which wasn't so graceful. Well, that's right. I mean, I think we've called this one fancy footwork, haven't well, we? Well, you would have seen plenty of fancy footwork in your time. I have. I mean, blokes like Darren Jarman, who, he was fantastic. He's as mm -hmm. good as I've seen. Peter well, Matera, Michael well, Long. Well, Darren yeah, well, I do remember him well mm -hmm. now, yes. <laughs> well, of course, I remember Keith Gregg vividly running down the MCG in the Arden Street wing. And uh, those blokes sort of, they made it look easy, don't they? They made it look very easy. And uh, we've got a few people that made it look just a little bit harder, haven't we? <laughs> Uh, this was actually taken from the uh, Channel 10 v Channel 9 game here. That's where we uh, have a look at a bit of the footage here as Jacko with the ball. He goes for a couple of bounces. Go, Jacko, have a look at him. Have a look at his style. And oh, oh, oh Jacko, you idiot. Very well done. Now, that's a, that's a piece. It's a handball out. And who's got it now? It's young Winders Marshall. Can't get his kick away. Now, here is... Uh, Young Wayne Lewis, he has one bounce, drops it. By Christ, what did he do there, Jack? I'm not going to know, but if you're no good at football, he get a job in bull and circ. Never seen that in my life. Uh, goes. Now, coming up, this next one, it's one of my favourites. Uh, this comes from Crip Point versus Somerville. And beautiful stuff. Don't you love to see that? Look, I think we've got to have a look at that one again. And... Yeah, play on to call there. And here's one from the... Uh, from the umpire training school as we see the guy jogging back here and <laughs> hasn't quite got it mastered. Never mind. Bit of an excerpt from uh, Xavier versus Halebury and uh, you'll see the Xavier player iron out the Halebury coach there. Just in your background and 
Well, there's one way to fix up the opposing coach. And it's an example of balance and poise. <laughs> Look at that. There he is. You idiot. What are it? We go Romsey versus Kilmore. And we see a brilliant bit of play from the, uh, the player here as he goes in and... That's <laughs> a try! Scores the try. <laughs> Very well done there. Tries to V Torquay and the old fullback slipping over trick. <laughs> there he is, perfect three point landing. Have a look at that. And away we go. And here we see the bloke, the big slip. Oh, and oh. have a look at him go. Oh. 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 Taught himself how to run that bloke, never mind. He does bounce too, really. Here comes from Port v Springy as we see the unbelievable footwork from the Port Melbourne player in question. And beautiful. <laughs> oh, but did a nice job to, to, to scoot the ball out afterwards. He, he's just the engine room down there at uh, Port. Here's three cheers for the umpy. Check out this one. <laughs> Preparation. Yeah. And, uh, oh, and he's play on. Bouncing. That's just play on, that apparently. Oh, very nice indeed. Now this one, it's like uh, those American shows where they say, look out for the surprise ending. See if you can tell what's going to happen to this bloke as he runs for the ball. And there he goes. <laughs> Wouldn't have tickled there, that's good commitment. He's after the yeah, ball. Don Don Scott would have been happy with that. Yes. Ball comes to the ground. So you keep your eye on the goal umpire. Exactly, he misses the ball, but what's that goal umpire? Oh. K8 himself. You know Lee Matthews, is he? Oh. A very, very nasty incident. <laughs> Remember, that doesn't happen more. Because they know where the place are. are. Yes. <laughs> Sammy Bruno's there to mark. Oh, give him one to go on with. Which is a nice start. Bit of a, it gets better though. There's a bit of a... Quick kick out. There's a attention. Tempted to square up. Oh, the elbow comes out there. Oh, one. Oh, <laughs> the umpire, which one's he going to pay? Oh, apparently... Oh, okay, yeah, fair the unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever's worst hurt gets the ball. It's, it's always the safe way. Give it to the unconscious bloke. That was a fair bump too. He'll be able to do something with it. We have a look at an incident from the Yarra Junction versus Seville match. And you see the player come crashing into the goal post there. Very unfortunate incident. And down like the proverbial sack fall. Now, of course, in footy, uh, your evasive skills need to be tipped up. They, they do. Just. And you should also pick who you're trying to take oh, on. Exactly. I mean, do you think you could have picked the big one? Anyone that had a second go at him. Now that's riding the bumps with the green. It wasn't a soft landing either. As we see... Now I reckon this bloke's soft, this goal umpire. It's a soft performance from the goal umpire, you know. Ball's hit him in the stomach. He's forgotten whether it was a point or a goal. He's just worried about himself. Well, you know, goal umpires, they're not as hard as they used to be. <laughs> Hello. No. They're not. Oh. And Robbie Muir, not happy. It's, it's an Academy Award performance, <laughs> that. Bell, bounce, knock, bell, oh, looking fellow. As we see it now, here's a good. Yeah, if you're defending, push the goal and pile over. He won't know what's he going won't on. You can't see it, exactly. And then pick him up and apologise. But uh, the boys sitting around the ground in the cars seem to like it. <laughs> St. Peter's versus Glenn Waverley. And uh, resembling ballet here, it's the Nutcracker Suite. <laughs> And in a little bit of trouble too, the young kid here. Oh, not very pleasant. Bit of uh, Lee Matthews no, revisited. Robin, Shout Collingwood versus Fitzroy under 19s. Jason Kroll shirt fronting the goalpost. Oh. Ouch. Now Don Scott would have said that's good play because he had his eyes on the ball. There it is. Ouch. Thank you very much. Come on, Chris. Solid contact. Oh, oh off the ball. Good too. shepherd. Good shepherd. <laughs> nice shepherd. Pity the bloke couldn't pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's and the girls. Here's one from the ladies' game, and if I may say, that oh, ain't no lady. She's uh, she's fighting out of her division there, oh, isn't she? Oh, she's well out of her division. <laughs> I, I think they got to look into that one. Ooh. Well, Trevor, it's great to see the women playing the game, isn't it? Absolutely. But that old adage still stands true. What adage is that, mate? A good big woman will always squash a good little woman, won't she? <laughs> well, uh, there's another adage, of course, uh, white men can't jump, but they do bounce. <laughs> oh, don't they? And that big fellow that bounced, I mean, in particular, the uh, the slow motion replay that we see here. Well, it's great the way he shows him the ball there. Oh, that, look, that was full of skill, the bounce. I think it's just, oh. just ambition outweighing ability. 
I think his lucky that his stomach hit the ground before his head did. It just well, took a little bit of a it did little cushion bit of the impact blow out of it. it. Yeah. Still and of course, uh, the other good one there was uh, the bloke running into the open goal. Well, possibly the most embarrassing thing that could happen in football. Running into an open goal, clear, under no pressure and tripping. And, uh, well, he scored a try, really, didn't he? <laughs> But I, look, I, I felt for the guy. I can remember one incident when we were playing uh, Essendon, I think it was. And I didn't actually run into an open goal, but the ball was bouncing on the goal line. It bounced about twice. I think I've had four air swings, and then it's trickled through for a point. And I never got bootlace on it. So I, I know how he feels, but uh, I'm glad it wasn't that bad. It's good the way they use those sort of highlights in all the ads too, oh, isn't it, Don't Jake? they? Just so you can relive your horrors. <laughs> Blokes get 1,100 goals in AFL football. We'll, 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 we'll show this one. Yeah, we'll just show these four air swings for a moment. Yeah, beautiful stuff. But, of course, I had a lot of people ask me during the year, Jase, about the incident. The glass of water incident with Sammy, the Sookie La La incident. Well, you uh, had a lot of people. How many do you think I had? Well, yeah. Well, tell us, were you fair dinkum? Did well, you turn? Well, let me ask you first. I bet you the majority of people that spoke to you thought I was deadly serious. Yes. I think 98% of the people that asked me thought I was serious. And I can honestly, without a shadow of a doubt, say that I did my utmost to prevent myself from bursting out with laughter. I had to, and if you have a look at the highlights, I'm like this a bit. And I kept biting my finger because I was about to burst out laughing. How can you, how can you be mad at Sam? I mean, it's impossible. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you were serious or not, but uh, it was definitely good for football. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, let's go to some of the hold-ups, some of the incidents, uh, like the glass of water incident, which have held up things along the way. Now, there's a little bit of a stash going on here, Trev, but watch for the follow-up. Well, uh, this is one of the ones w that we couldn't show you during the year. That's right. And uh, you're about to see why. Now, the, uh, the melee, we see the uh, guy in the Hawthorne jumper at the front. Yeah, right here, the crowd. right here, the bloke in the red. Bit of taunting, and oh. thank you very much. I reckon the bloke in the red jumper, as soon as the other fella started running at him, he just realised right then and there he'd made the biggest mistake of his life. And, of course, it's on for young and old. Would you call it, is that a melee, Chase, or is that, is that more a Donny book? That's a good old-fashioned all-in. That's your all-in. Now the trainers are into it, the umpires, the, everybody. Well, pretty soon the uh, crowd will be into it. And it's one of those ugly incidents that, uh, well, they're a blot on the game, but geez, they're good fun to watch, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, in trouble getting one of them off. Well, exactly. As you see, the crowd start becoming involved, in, and that's where it becomes frightening, Joe. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that's the whole point. You know, the two teams wearing different jumpers. So and you know I think exactly it's all over. Do. They're all throwing the arms up, and that would just rub salt into the wounds, wouldn't it? As we now go to Perth versus Hagley here, and, uh, we see the number one player there uh, for the uh, side of the Fusco Jones get reported and gets a tongue in his ear. Merv Hughes. Which uh, has gone the Merv Hughes on him and uh, he doesn't seem to like that. The, uh, the player there, he's had it. Now he's off. Blokes are going to kiss me, I'm leaving the ground. That's, that's all there is to it. And uh, a, an amusing bit of play from this player. And as we come across... <laughs> Uh, not bad. Well, yeah, imagine if it had been a hard goal. <laughs> Final sensation. We've run out of cans. There goes the whip. He's on the, he's the runner. He's gone for the cans. Co-commentator heading over towards the can tent, making good ground at this stage. Six to four favourite to get four cans, too. And he goes. <laughs> Moving into the crowd. You can just see him going in now. Over the fence. Comes to the hurdle. He goes through. Dashing through. You can still see his head going. That's a desperate man. Over to the can tent. He'll get four or five. Here comes the whip, have a look at the whip, he's got four bumps. No doubt he, oh, he was never going to rest, he's been busy about it too. Making good ground through the back pocket, he comes on a half-back flank. He has a bounce, picks it up again. Burst through a tackle and look at the whip go, he's got four bumps, four FLs. And he comes into the back, back up to the truck, main commentary position. You idiot. As we come now, Jase, it's always the way, you know, there's a bit of pushing and shoving here and there's, there's always one, one clown. Bloke, that's right. There's one bloke that comes in and starts, there he is, there he look is. at that. <laughs> you know, what's that supposed to achieve? You way to start in the room, isn't it? I reckon his boots have copped a couple of his teammates too. And it's on again. Not quite the eight seconds for a uh, for a proper ride, was it? 
pretty good effort. But uh, the red light went off and he heard the bell. OK, and this week's legends look closely. It's a bit of a rip-off here. Karen V. Rosebud. And we see the player come in. And, oh, you may have just seen... Dacked him. Very well done. Oh, ball, yes. See, and this is the Shark Shuffle. The Deakin University Sharks. They perform this ritual after every winning game. And over the last 20 years, the Sharks record is 57 wins, 269 losses. So every now and again, they perform the Shark Shuffle. Eddie. They have to get Arthur Murray into teaching the dance every now and again anyway. Bunbury versus Kerry Park as the boys are about to run out for the grand final. <laughs> and I think that all goes well for your grand final hopes. That's, that's a big lift for the team. Really, and have a look at this one. And uh, the City Ladies versus Scottstown Ladies and a Pelican on the field. <laughs> what the bloody hell? It's a bird, mate. Yeah. Bird. The best looking bird on the ground. Think it's most amusing. Uh, Kilburn vs Port Districts here, and we see a bit of a uh, exchange between the two players here. <laughs> <laughs> and nice to see it on the football field. And, uh, and this one. And it's a new slant on the game, Nudie Football. And we'll pick up the commentary here. Watch this guy swing onto the right foot. What's he doing there? The man with the ballot class. James Holder. The grandfather's got no problems, ladies and gentlemen. And kicks a goal. It's true, the bouncer's a problem. Fantastic stuff. Jesus. And uh, there, there was not a fit backside, Eddie. I reckon you no. show a drive in movie on that. Full, full march for, full march for a magnif magnif magnificent sausage there, wasn't it? Great goal. <laughs> Well, Jase, that, that certainly was a sausage. Well, <laughs> now, I must say one thing. If you're a streaker, you, uh, you certainly put your pride on the line, don't you? Well, uh, I've got to say, how was the kick, though? Well, he's drilled at he's 60 <laughs> yards with the bare foot. Bare foot and through the high diddle. <laughs> Fantastic. Unbelievable. Now, mate, what about yourself? Uh, the football show, uh, how, how has it been for the players, uh, you know, as far as the public's concerned? How's the reaction been out there? Well, look, I, I can say that I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I think um, from a public point of view, they, um, they get for the first time to see the personality of the players. They see them in a different which, light. Which can be a good or bad thing, depending well, it, on who. Well, it can. Again, that's up to public taste. Some of the people will like some of the players' personalities and, uh, and others might be a little bit offset, but at least they, they get to judge them rather than just uh, watching them play footy on the TV and, uh, and thinking, well, I wonder what sort of guy he is. Well, I remember uh, talking to Dougie about it one time and he said that after 17 years of playing football, he, f he finally gets recognised in the eastern <laughs> suburbs. <laughs> well, I think uh, after Hawke's efforts on the last two years of the footy show, um, I think he'd probably be one of the most recognisable players playing the game. Oh, absolutely, no doubt about that. And, uh, and if, you don't probably... if you don't recognise him, you just have to listen for the laugh, don't you? Exactly. Well, uh, of course, you two have gone into uh, other ventures together, the, uh, the pizza ads. <laughs> Oh, mate, it was funny doing that, I've got to tell you. How it many was real times? funny. Come on. Well, it, it took a few, but I can. Uh, uh, this is fact. They had to tell Doug to stop laughing so much. They had to tell him to stop? They had to keep telling me to smile a bit more and Hawk stopped laughing too much. Well, one of my favourite stories about the Hawk was when he was going to a dress in town at 65 Collins Street. <laughs> and he's rang up Eddie, he said, I can't find it. He said, Where are you? He said, I can see 64 and I can see 66. <laughs> And he said, what's next to 66? He said, 68. He said, can you see a pattern emerging? <laughs> it's across the road, you idiot. Well, he never claimed to be the brightest of people, Hawk, did he? But he always enjoyed his football. And he's uh, certainly been an ornament to the show. Oh, he has been. And I think, I think everyone's identified with him too. Well, uh, some more than others, of course. Well, uh, let's have a look at some, uh, some of those other incidents uh, that we found hard to categorise, quite frankly. Well, they're, they're, yes, far too widely incredible to be put in the one batch, aren't they? All right, we'll see what you make of these. As uh, we look at the first one here, we see uh, Keegan, number eight, picks up the ball. And a uh, nice highlight here is you see the player on the ground, beautiful ball skills. <laughs> Just a shame that uh, his teammate there couldn't cap it off by uh, picking up the handball as he went past. Oh, it was a good try. Oh, you idiot. And uh, this is a very nice one here. This is from Parramatta Goannas versus Manly Wolves. And we're looking for Peter Taylor in the goal square here as he takes the ball and... Beautiful. <laughs> OK, <laughs> Assumption versus De La Salle, not a bad little goal, this. Brett Money going through strong this time. Puts on his oh, right foot. And, oh, don't tell me he's kicked it. Oh, yes, he has. Very nice goal there, Brett Money. That is pure 
That's all right, that's skill. <laughs> now this, I reckon this is a contender. Have a look at this. This is the one, two, three. Here we come, we see the play there. Nice grab on the one hand. Oh! oh, 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 oh <laughs> Sausage. You've got to be happy with that. Here we go, and still a free arm. And uh, that's all very fair, I suppose. Here we go, fullback kicking out. Catch it through to a point. You absolute legend. No, almost about it. Well, you're honest, he's done it again. He's done it again. This could go all day. Okay, Denny versus Finley Legends. Fittingly enough, and the umpy takes a screamer. <laughs> Uh, Little Hell versus Bennettswood and uh, and a bit of Maradona here. Have you seen off the ground once? Follows up off the ground twice. Off the ground again. Oh, beautiful play. Look at the skills there. Maradona and go! <laughs> And uh, this one comes from uh, not, from a game between and Perth and, and Hagley and Reserves in the Tasmanian oh, Tasmanian competition. I know, hang on, now we've got the Unova versus Newbra. And uh, if you look at this star coming to goal, there's a bit of a blur up there. I can't handball, you idiot. And misses. You absolute star. Okay, as we come to this one, we see uh, Darren Hodge is about to star here for the uh, Magpies. Perth v Hagley here, and we see Hodgie is actually running the wrong way as we speak. And he drills a beautiful pass to the opposition full forward. <laughs> Sensational play. Ed, can imagine now, this is an interesting one here. Why I versus... Why I. Why I. Why I. Thanks, Billy. Versus Old Blighty. And we see here, this is the grand final here, we see number five's been given the free kick for the uh, two high tackle, and the 50 metres has been paid, and the siren's gone, and uh, the bloody guys, well there they oh, are, it's, happy, a, it's a reward for a hard What's year's slot. They've yeah, done it. very well, no, the bloody no, guys, uh, no, what's the each other. don't know what's happened to the uh, free kick, but that, never mind, good on you little boys of bloody, bit of celebration here, as we see, hang on, what's this, free kick is about to be taken, I think. You see the Blighty boys still the, celebrating. The Blighty unaware, boys are going off. Unaware of what is about to happen. Yeah. Now one of them's caught wind of it there. You're there they go. Oh, they've run down. down. Something's going line. on. <laughs> and here we see Blake running in to take the kick. From 50. And from outside, 55 points down. That's oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we see the way I boys. <laughs> Well, there it was, Jase. The agony and the ecstasy. Mate, all in the space of a couple of seconds. Those guys got to know the thrill of winning a grand final <laughs> for 30 seconds. And then had it taken away. It's the old uh, chocolates to ball lolly story, isn't it? Well, uh, for, uh, in case you were wondering what happened there, the, the free kick was paid just before the siren went. Yes. And the opposition player threw the ball away and the 50 metres was paid. But uh, unfortunately, the crowd got involved and uh, weren't aware of that. Well, nor most of the players, because uh, I think only one or two guys late ran down to stand on the mark, and they didn't get there in time. In fact, uh, if the uh, crowd hadn't invaded the field and started lifting blokes up, they might have got back there to defend. <laughs> yeah, exactly, although I must say, it's gone through post high. It was a, a marvellous kick. It was a great kick. Now, what about those other two? Uh, the last three there were all sensational. We had the bloke uh, streaming into the open goal, having six or seven bounces there, and uh, the full forward calling for it. Well, I would have shot him. I mean, the full forward's on his own. He's run 40 or 50 yards with no one behind him, no one near him. He's got a bloke backing him up. He's then mucked up the bounce, picked it up himself, and thought, I'm too tired to keep running, so I'll just kick it from here, 10 yards out directly in front, and missed. Well, I hope the full forward wasn't on 99, that's well, for sure. <laughs> if you had a look, I think the full forward started to walk towards him to say a few well-chosen <laughs> words. And uh, what about the other one, the bloke streaming down the ground in the wrong direction? Well, that was just fantastic. Now, what I want to know is, how did the opposition fall forward know where to lead to. Well, as any full forward knows, it's instinctive. It doesn't matter who's streaming down the ground, Trev, you lead, and you lead hard. <laughs> he just delivered it perfectly, didn't he? Now, mate, uh, you, you're one of the great exponents of the mark, especially the chess mark. Oh, very good at the chess mark. 
<laughs> and uh, we're going to have a look at some, some more of the ones that came in over the head. Yeah, well, I, I, look, I wish I could jump as high as some of these guys. I just can't. I mean, uh, truth be known, I can't jump over a jam tin. That's why I always play in front. It's just that I don't have any choice. Well, I did see you out one night and you told me about, you, you, you said you'd taken the mark of the year that day and I saw it and you, you did get <laughs> probably a foot, a off, foot the off the ground. A foot off the ground, yeah. Well, that's, that's big news for me, but uh, some of these guys just put me to shame. All right, well, let's have a look at some more of the big grabs that came in. OK, let's kick-start the Legends this week. Robertstown versus BSR, and... Yeah, not a bad grab, that one. Yeah, we'll, we'll pay that. What do you say, fellas? Yep, not a baddie. This one here from West Preston. This is probably a bit better. Ball comes into just inside the... Yeah, oh, oh, is it? Very nice grab. A great Looks mark like there, the mark to... Uh, John Rinaldi. Yeah, good delivery into the forward line there. Yeah. Yeah. happy with that, Jay. Old Paradians v North Old Boys here, and this is a grab. This is right up there in contention. Good kick. Oh, oh very nice indeed. Half uh, forward line, this allows Miller the chance to come up. Miller for Northcote Park, kicks out onto the centre wing, up they go. Oh, oh thank what you a very ripper. Much. That's Casey, the man they didn't pay before. We got this one here. And a couple of big grabs here, Hayfield v Sale. This is Colin Cox. Oh, oh, not a bad little one there. <laughs> Coxie, well done. And Adrian Nellis from St. Albans. St. Albans. Geelong, mate. Oh, oh, very nice. St. Albans, did you say? St. Albans. St. Albans. That's a spec. As we see, yes, not a bad grab Wade, there. Pearler of a mark. <laughs> <laughs> now he's hand be played on the man ball. All right, here's one, Matt Whaley versus East e Bentley. Scott Day, and looking like oh, it's Isos, the illegitimate son of Serge. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes. Not a bad grab there. Devonport versus Wynyard from Tassie, and Stephen Phoebe. There he is. Yeah, might have a bit of a future, that boy. What do you reckon? <laughs> Phoebes, there he is. It must have been uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, Teal Cup. Next one comes from the old EDFL. Good luck to all the boys down there. East Keeler versus Strathy. And a bit of a hanger here. Oh, very very nice grab. Oh. Mark Spence taking the grab there. We have another look. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a nice grab. Oh. Next one comes from Montrose v Clayton. And Shane Lewis, Lewis with the hanger there. Shane Lewis takes an very nice indeed. What do you think of that one, Gaz? Very yeah, happy with that one. What a grab. Pretty happy with that? Yeah, Don Vale versus St Paul's, and the unidentified player takes a pretty good grab. Woohoo! Yeah, you'd be pretty happy with that one. Up there. Another good one here, Julian Kersner. There he is. Mouse Gopers versus Kingswood, nice suits. Here we go. Julian Kersner now with Essendon. Sean Miles taking a bit of a grab from the kick out. It's cool. He kicks out. He's just deep to the half back plank now. Looking. Oh, what a mark! And yeah, that's fair enough. Sean Miles got up a mile, mile layer, the front leap, and there was a specker right over. Waxing lyrical there, a specker in fact. Powertown versus Croydon, and we see young 15-year-old Paul Cooper in the open age there. Oh, yeah, nice little hanger indeed. Fifteen. Oh, the 15-year-old there, and came down hard. Ouch. Oh. oh, has he got a broken neck? Oh, see, that's why you never get up that high, Jason. <laughs> it's just a good idea. <laughs> Here's his kick, it goes long and high, easing towards the square. Let's see what they can do. Oh, the showstopper! What a mark! And that's just typical of the showstopper. Albion v Sunshine here, and we see Steve Dole. Oh. Steve Dolly Parton with that one there. And stays up there. Very nice. Now, that was a huge hanger, that last one, Jase. Oh, enormous. He uh, hung up there for an eternity, didn't he? It was like the old Trevor Marker marks. Oh, I do remember that, the old sensational 70s video. I've had a good look at that one, the, uh, the long sleeve number one from St Kilda with the long blonde hair. Or the big Gary Ablett. Yeah, well, actually, it, it looked a bit like that too. He sort of came off the side, twisted, took it one hand, but uh, I'd venture to say he held it perhaps a little bit longer than Gazza did. Now, mate, uh, we've had some good fun on the show during the year, and as I said, uh, we had uh, plenty of videos sent in that, that didn't make it to air. Now, uh, but while, while I've got you here, though, I wanted to just ask you about uh, the younger viewers. What can you say to the, the aspiring legends of AFL football? Well, I mean, we have, we've seen a lot of guys um, rising to the peaks of the game and, and taking the great marks and all this sort of thing, but uh, a lot of hard work goes into actually getting there. I think one of the things that was always uh, said to me and, and still stands true is that uh, you should always at least 
If you're in a beer football, it'll look like one. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have the right equipment? You must have the right equipment. Pull the socks up, tuck the jumper in. If it's a wet day, you wear the long stops, you wear the short stops. You know, you, you must adapt to the conditions. Well, because your equipment does make such a big difference, as we're about to see from this piece of video footage that was sent in earlier this year. Oh, I thought we'd done it. Now, uh, just oh, take us through here, Jase. Oh. Uh, there's an uh, AFL legend about to have his kick. And... Uh, so I was actually giving the kids a demonstration of how not to kick the ball. Uh -huh. Now I think uh, the official part of proceedings that day having been completed, the boys had had a couple of looseners afterwards, had we they? We had. We, we'd had a couple of quiet ones and we were actually, uh, that was a cow paddock we were in. It was a bit wet and I had the trusty old Blundstones on. Mm -hmm. And then tried to kick a uh, 147 metre torpedo, which was fairly sensible. Well, uh, you kicked about a 40 yard <laughs> torpedo and you got a pat on the back for it. <laughs> I got my just desserts, didn't I? <laughs> that was fantastic stuff, mate. Now, you didn't want us to show that during the year? No, well, I'd rather leave that till the end of the year. I mean, we're concentrating on footy at the time and you don't need to see that sort of thing. Well, do you find that makes a difference to you, appearing on the footy show? Does that mean that you don't take your footy as seriously? No, I've, I've had a lot of people actually raise the fact that because you're in the media that uh, it's distracting and detracting from your football performance. But it's no different to any sort of job that you have. Um, I, I enjoy working in the media and the fact that I'm on a, a light-hearted show like the footy show or uh, talking on radio or whatever and having a joke doesn't make me any less serious or less dedicated about my football. Well, of course, uh, working in the media, it beats working. <laughs> the Clayton's job, it's fantastic, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty good. Well, mate, thanks very much for coming down today. It's been a pleasure. Of course, Almost Footy Legends will be back bigger and better than ever in 96. We'd like to thank everyone that took part in 95. And if you want to get your videos in early for this year, then send them to this address, P.O. Box 800, Richmond, 3121. That's almost footy legends, P.O. Box 800, Richmond, 3121. Well, Jase, over the previous hour, we've seen plenty of deals make legends of themselves. Well, now we're going to see a few legends make deals of themselves. Because <laughs> our theme tune, uh, It's More Than The Game, which uh, takes us out every week, we see the players miming to and, the theme uh, tune. For good reason, miming, Trev. And we're about to see why, and hear why, as we hear the actual audio of It's More Than A Game.